How you doing, fam bam? This is Chris Mizo here, and I'm super stoked because I have some very useful information for the brand new AMD X670 motherboards. Everything that you're gonna hear in this very video will probably make you super excited. The next generation of AMD Ryzen 7000 series, because this is gonna be something that you really are gonna wanna hear. Regardless if you're a gamer, a creative, or a enthusiast, I know not all of you are fans of Asus, especially with their bloatware and the problems that they've been recently having with the Z690 boards. So I do have a variety of other motherboards in play and wait till you hear the specifications for it. The very first one I will go over is Asus's X670 motherboard. And the reason why I wanna bring that up to you because it's just gonna be a taste of things to come. Don't worry, I got MSI in the lineup, I got Gigabyte, and there is more. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about AMD's new Zen 4 processor, because I have a load of information, especially from this Computex 2022 rally. Only disappointing thing, we haven't heard too much from NVIDIA, and we all thought that they would might bring in some sort of display or some idea of what NVIDIA will bring in the 4000 series. But that's besides the point. We're here because we want to know more about AMD's brand new motherboards, the X670s. What will they bring to the table, and how will they compete with the Z690 motherboards? Asus brought out the big guns because they brought out the X670E Crosshair Extreme Motherboard. Also, don't worry because for the newer generations, the B650s, which are just under the X670s. Your mouth is just gonna drool when you hear these specs because I had to wipe down the desk because I couldn't believe everything that I heard, especially for these new motherboards. And if you don't already know, Zen 4 will require brand new AM5 boards. Unfortunately, it will not work with any of the AM4 boards anymore. For ASUS's brand new board, it is 20 to 2, power phase up to 110 amps. They do have micro fine alloy chokes, power cool 2, power connectors to help keep that motherboard nice and cool. So the reason why it's designed that way is during extreme overclocking, it will be able to stabilize that voltage to keep your motherboard nice and chill. It will also feature DDR5 and it will also have USB 4.0 and USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports. And it will also contain Quick Charge 4. So that will be great for anyone who has Qualcomm processors on their phones. ASUS will also feature their Gen Z2 card. Yeah, it's gonna look something like this here. So you can expect that with the X670 motherboards. I'm sure it's probably improved. I bet it's a little bit lighter, probably has an extra bus for uh, PCI, for M2 PCI Express 5.0 when they do end up being released. And for those who aren't interested in ASUS, and understandably so, they will also come out with something for MSI. MSI has a very good lineup and they also came more prepared than every other manufacturer because wait till you hear this. MSI did announce the X670E godlike. This is all ATX-E boards. This is not just regular ATX. So these are the more higher tier motherboards that I am mentioning, but that does not mean MSI is only mentioning these specifications because they also have a little bit more in play. But first, I'm going to go off of their higher tier motherboard just to get an idea of what AM5's power really is. Now, these are all LGA 1718, which is the socket for AMD's Zen 4 processors. So it will have an 18 to 2 VRM power phase. So each one will be rated at 90 amps and it will feature two PCI Express. Express 5.0 ports, and they will also feature four M2 slots, which two of them can go up to PCI Express 5.0. The two other ones will be standard PCI Express 4.0. It's funny to say that standard because it just seemed like yesterday when that just got released. But hey, these are the times, and if you want to future proof it, this is the way to do it. And the good news is, as I said, MSI did announce a little bit more. The MSI Carbon X670 motherboard, some very good features with it. It will feature very similar uh, specifications such as their MEG motherboard. So it will have two PCI Express 
NVMEs, PCI Express 5.0 NVMEs, and two PCI Express 4.0 NVMEs. And get this, MSI is not done yet. MSI has truly pushed to the edge because they also announced their creator boards. 14 plus two Duet Power Rail System and dual eight pin CPU connectors. With the Pro X670P, it is also equipped with one PCI Express 5.0 slot, 2.5 gigabyte LAN connection, and it also is built with Wi-Fi E. To give you guys all the information, all these motherboards that I will share with you, a lot of them will feature up to 2.5 gigabytes LAN speed, and it will also feature Wi-Fi E. I also want to share with you gigabytes. They also announced their motherboard for your information, just in case if you're thinking of going gigabytes route. And there's nothing wrong with it because they did amazing for their Z690 ORS board. Gigabyte's X670E ORS motherboard is very real. It is their extreme version and it is their extended ATX. It can be very tempting to go to this very motherboard because I'm sure it will be very price friendly and it will have all the features that you really need to future proof your PC. It will also feature 18 phase power delivery. A gigabyte will also feature DDR5 on their motherboard. It will actually have three slots for PCI Express 5.0 and they'll have one for PCI Express 5.0 eight times speed. Then they will also have two PCI Express 4.0 slots. They will have up to four PCI Express 5.0 slots for NVMe. Anytime it goes up a generation, it typically doubles in speed. You can expect speeds as high as 13,000 to 14,000 megabytes per second. Any of these extended boards are built for overclocking. A lot of them are passively cooled, so it's less stress to worry about these motherboards. And just when you thought that was the end, that isn't it, because Ace Rock is also mentioning their motherboards too. That's right, they got the X70E Tai Chi announced, X670E Steel Legend, and it's built perfectly for either if you're an enthusiast, gamer, creator, anybody alike. Believe it or not, their motherboard has up to 26 phases of power delivery. They will also feature PCI Express 5.0. They will also have DDR5. They will also support Thunderbolt 4. The storage for Ace Rock's motherboards will also have PCI Express 5.0 built into those NVMe slots. It is Hyper M2 compatible, so just as I showed you with Asus's card where it is a Hyper M2 card, you will be able to use that very card in them if you choose to get an NVMe 5.0 SSD, which is something you gotta have. So I think we heard plenty about motherboards. You get the idea. They're practically phasing out DDR4. That's not going to be in play anymore. It's all going to be PCI Express 5.0. So if you do build any of these systems, I do recommend getting a power supply that can support PCI Express 5.0 because you're going to end up using it anyway eventually. But to get to the point, I want to talk to you about what AMD also brought out. That's right. I got some AMD processor news, what they have new for their Zen 4 processors. What do they actually have to offer? Because AMD did mention their brand new CPUs. They have up to four cores and up to 16 threads. They did show it with Tokyo Ghostwire, and with those speeds, it was averaging around 5.3 gigahertz to 5.5 gigahertz. Specification-wise, it is also with DDR5, with 6,000 megahertz of speed and CL30 memory. When AMD did have this on display, when they were benchmarking it, they were claiming that it was able to be Intel 12900KS by 33%, which is an incredible benchmark. A lot of questions arose around this very processor, such as if it was overclocked and AMD claims that it was not overclocked, and these are just the stock settings itself. So if it can beat it by 33%, their five nanometer processors, just imagine what they can bring to the table. And I can't wait to test this for myself. AMD's marketing did claim that the L2 cache is up to 15% improvement over each thread. These processors are able to power DDR5. They have PCI Express 5.0 memory controllers. They are able to power RDNA too. So fam, man, guys, I hope you found this content very useful. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you know anyone who wants to build a brand new PC or needs help building a brand new PC, make sure you share this very video with them. And also, if you're interested in getting a custom build, make sure you send me an email. And also, if you are new to my videos and you want to join the big one, the fan band, make sure you go down and hit the subscribe button for more. And don't forget to hit the notification bell for 
all the newest updates, make sure to follow my Twitter handle here as it is the same as my TikTok and IG as well. So fam fam guys, what do you think of these brand new X670 boards? Does it make you excited? Does it make you ecstatic? Or do you feel like it's something that you wanna wait to see if they actually perform as they say they do? Or AMD's processors, let me know. I love hearing from you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Chris Mizo, signing out.